Hi everyone, it's Wednesday, March 25th, and my poem for today is by Martina Spada, who is a living poet. I got to see him speak and read some of his poems on a panel at the Boston Book Festival last October. And I didn't really know a lot about him before then, but I recently encountered him again a few weeks ago. I'm taking a class through Harvard Extension, an online class called Poetry in America for Teachers, the, the City from Whitman to Hip Hop. And for that class, we read his poem that I'll read today called Alabanza. And in the class, they compared Martina Spada to Walt Whitman and that he writes about people who typically aren't seen as worthy of poetry, I guess. Um, so he writes about the everyday person, the worker. And I think part of that comes from, people say part of that comes from his experience with his father. Uh, Martina Spada grew up and was born in America, but his father was Puerto Rican and he was a Puerto Rican activist and a civil rights activist. And so it seems like he's kind of followed in his father's footsteps in that way, in that he's kind of highlighting the good things that um, people who are often overlooked do for this world. And so I, I actually have the book, I have his book, Alabanza, it's called Alabanza, and this is a collection of a bunch of his works, but the poem I'll read today is just the last, actually the last poem in this whole book, and it's from his collection called Alabanza also, that was published in 2002. I have the book because it's reading for a class that I'm supposed to take this summer at grad school, a poetry workshop. I really hope I still get to do it, but who knows? We'll see. I'll definitely still read the book anyway. And so, as I mentioned, the poem is called Alabanza, and it's not just that, it's Alabanza in praise of Local 100. And there's a little preface here. For the 43 members of hotel employees and restaurant employees, Local 100, working at the Windows in the World restaurant who lost their lives in the attack on the World Trade Center. And so there are a couple of reasons why I chose this poem today. One, people do keep comparing the world today to what it was like post 9-11. And I was 10 when that happened. So I, I was told what had happened, but I didn't fully understand it. And I know my students weren't even, weren't even alive when 9-11 um, happened. But I think we're also at this moment where we're really starting to appreciate the people who we often overlook, the people who deliver our mail, the grocery store cashiers and the people who stock the shelves. And I, I think it's really, that's one good thing that's come out of this is that we're really starting to appreciate people who we tend to overlook in society and they really keep society running. So although this isn't really a happy poem, it does end with some hope and I really like that. So Alabanza, there's a little glossary at the back of this book. And alabanza means praise in Spanish, sometimes used in a religious sense, from alabar to celebrate with words. I think that's really nice. It's a really nice uh, name for a poem. So here we go. Alabanza in Praise of Local 100 by Martina Spada. Alabanza, praise the cook with the shaven head and a tattoo on his shoulder that said oye a blue-eyed Puerto Rican with people from, from Fajardo, the harbor of pirates centuries ago. Praise the lighthouse in Fajardo, candle glimmering white to worship the dark saint of the sea. Alabanza, praise the cook's yellow pirate's cap worn in the name of Roberto Clemente, his plane that flamed into the ocean loaded with cans for Nicaragua, for all the mouths chewing the ash of earthquakes. Alabanza. Praise the kitchen radio, dial clicked even before the dial on the oven, so that music and Spanish rose before bread. Praise the bread, Alabanza. Praise Manhattan from 107 flights up, like Atlantis glimpsed through the windows of an ancient aquarium. Praise the great windows where, the, where immigrants from the kitchen could squ squint and almost see their world, hear the chant of nations. Ecuador, Mexico, Republica Dominicana, Haiti, Yemen, Ghana, Bangladesh, Alabanza. Praise the kitchen in the morning where the gas burned blue on every stove and exhaust fans fired their diminutive propellers, hands cracked eggs with quick thumbs or sliced open cartons to build an altar of cans. 
Calabanza. Praise the busboy's music, the chime chime of his dishes and silverware in the tub. Alabanza. Praise the dish dog, the dishwasher who worked that morning because another dishwasher could not stop coughing or because he needed overtime to pile the sacks of rice and beans for a family floating away on some Caribbean island plagued by frogs. Alabanza. Praise the waitress who heard the radio in the kitchen and sang to herself about a man gone. Alabanza. After the thunder wilder than thunder, after the shutter deep in the glass of the great windows, after the radio stopped singing like a tree full of terrified frogs, after night burst the dam of day and flooded the kitchen, for a time the stoves glowed in darkness like the lighthouses in Fajardo, like a cook's soul. Soul, I say, even if the dead cannot tell us about the bristles of God's beard because God has no face. Soul, I say, to name the smoke beings flung in constellations across the night sky of this city and cities to come. Alabanza, I say, even if God has no face. Alabanza. When the war began from Manhattan to Kabul, two constellations of smoke rose and drifted to each other, mingling in icy air. And one said with an Afghan tongue, teach me to dance. We have no music here. And the other said with a Spanish tongue, I will teach you, music is all we have. So I've been thinking a lot about New York in the, in the recent days and um, I wanted to share this poem. So thank you everyone, hope you have a good day.